Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Lead left, grow right. Yes, we are back with the man of the hour. Uh, Tony Moralt joining us here, our chief leader and president. That's leadleftgrowright.com, a consulting and publishing company uh, centered around leadership. Also an author, a great man. Let me have him introduce himself. How are you? I'm doing great, Jill. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Would you mind saying hello and saying, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How does that? Sure. Uh, my, uh, I'm Tony Marlt, and uh, as Jill uh, introduced me, um, my most recent book is The Leadership Quotient. Um, I wrote that after serving in the Navy for nine years and serving um, 25 plus years in supply chain and technology uh, background uh, at a Fortune 500 company. Oh, wonderful. Well, it's exciting to have you here. And for today, what did you have in mind for us? Where are we taking it? Uh, today, we're going to uh, talk a little bit. Uh, uh, chapter seven is kind of the advanced course that I wrote, although anyone can really do it. But they're a little, uh, a little more difficult subjects in some ways. Um, last time we talked about the circle of praise and fear, mm-hmm. um, and that is a process where people will both give praise, but then also ask a question. So they'll say, uh, ideally, people would say, um, what I most appreciate about you, Jill, is that you're always on time and you have a wonderful speaking voice. And then I might say, um, What would help me do my job better is uh, if technology. Technology just froze us. Maybe my nose a little bit uh, clearer. Technology just froze us. Nope, you you just froze. You said technology and I said it froze us. (laughs) Am I still frozen? Nope, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Repeat what you said, though. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. That's so funny. So what I so after I gave you praise, what I then said was, what would help me do my job better is if technology, and then a cut out of all things, mm-hmm. uh, would enhance my nose so it was less shiny. Got um, it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got the so, joke now. Got it. Got yeah. It. So you go around, um, and everybody on your team would say that to every member. And so that's a very difficult thing to do, uh, especially publicly. But what I like about it is very honest. And um, when you say, it's easy to say what I most appreciate about you. Although some people, you know, if they have quarrels with someone on their team, Mm. they might find it difficult. But the harder part is then saying, uh, basically, uh, and, here's here's why i think you're a dipstick or whatever it is it's not really saying that but um it's phrased in in a way that's not off-putting to that individual so um you know what would help me do my job better is if you arrived to meetings uh on time so the rest of us wouldn't have to wait for you so it still gets the message right through so that's the circle of praise and fear and uh that we covered last time in brief Wow. Well, we're excited to have you here joining us. And unfortunately, I didn't get your notes with the next email and it oh. showed up. So I'm going to rely on you until they send it to me today. Yes, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. Thank so, you. Uh, so, on, on, so a couple of concepts that we'll, I'd like to talk about today is um, first, this concept of a system. And uh, we'll have to do a little bit of math sure. for that. Um, and then I'll talk a, a briefly about truth versus perception. And then talk about process solving instead of problem solving. So uh, why don't we dive into the systems uh, formula? So this is a little bit of math, but you'll see it behind me. And the math says S equals P cubed. So P times P times P plus P. Mm -hmm. And so every system is composed of um these four things in my opinion and um so a system is composed uh as you'll see on a board for those that can see people 
times process times policy or politics. And then only after you deal with all those things can you add technology and you hope it's good technology. Yeah. So, um, so the people and the process and the, and the politics, the people themselves are, are part of the system. And often we forget about the people as we're striving to hit some goal. But you have to understand your people. You have to understand their strengths and their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, and if you treat them like leaders, um, they're more likely to uh, work together to achieve the end goal that you have. And process, everything is composed of process, but people don't always naturally think in terms of process. So when you've got an issue to solve, um, you have to understand what the process is. So for instance, for you, you have preparation that you do for every podcast. Yeah. And, and this is a good example where um, the process normally is I would send you some topics and then we would discuss them. You'd be familiar ahead of time, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, the process broke down um, because you didn't receive that communication. So the process is just so important. How do you do things, whether it's in a manufacturing floor or whether it's in an office environment, you have to understand all the steps in the process and the process is usually linked to other processes that are going on. So that's the second. This is question. part of the poor leadership. No, I got your notes now. They sent them. They never sent uh, this morning. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. And the, then policy or politics. And um, the policies that companies use, uh, that is really, really important. You have to stay within those confines. Um, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is sometimes it's the politics and people are reluctant. And, and I can tell you, this was me years ago, reluctant to talk about the word politics in, in a corporation or organization. But the reality is politics exists. And mm -hmm. so we have to uh, acknowledge that. And Paul, I always say politics is neither good or bad. It just is. And um, politics is not about it. When you think of politics, it's really the oil that runs organizations. Yeah. Uh, and there can be bad politics, or... um, right? There can be individuals that uh, subvert what the organization is trying to do or specific individuals trying to do. But then there are, politics really is about uh, being able to influence people um, in a positive way to get something done and so those three things are specific in my formula as multipliers because if you forget about any of those from a math standpoint it goes to zero if you take the people out of it and forget about them that all goes to zero because they're all multiplied or you forget to do the process or address politics yeah. that all drives it to zero and when you're looking at a system those are the most critical things to look at, but often people, particularly if you're in a technology world, uh, implementing systems, they are all about the technology. Oh man, this is going to be the best technology in mm -hmm. the world and let's get it implemented. And they forget the effect on people. Uh, they forget the effect that, you know, the disruptiveness that that technology uh, has. So only after you address those three things, would you then add the technology because now you kind of understand the people and the process and the politics. Now it's a good time to add technology to that mix uh, and not before. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So does that it does make sense. Now, just to point out here, uh, I know we're recapping a little uh, from uh, last week as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we do need to discover this because we're going to talk next time the cost of the poor leadership, but uh, right. the advanced leadership. I want to find out how we, um, you know, you say, well, there's some kind of math involved. You mentioned the law of systems, S equals P3 plus T, people's process, policy, politics, technology. Can you explain that one? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of what I've been 
talking about. So a system is composed of those three elements, the people, the process, and the politics or policy. And if you don't address things from a systemic standpoint and look at the entire system, you're going to forget something. So, for example, if you forget to do the training and you're implementing a technology po uh, project, then the people aren't going to know how to use it. And they're going to say, this is a terrible project. It doesn't do what it is because you didn't train the people. And so they're very frustrated. Um, if, if you have a marketing issue, um, you have to understand your consumer, correct? So. Yeah. Um, so again, you heavily think about the people, um, and unfortunately, sometimes, you know, if you're marketing, you may not think about um, the politics uh, of how you're going to distribute that marketing material, and let's say whether store owners are going to accept it, um, and, and so on and so forth. So really, any case that you have, you can make about the system's the law of systems there. Yeah, absolutely. And what else did you want to share about advanced um, leadership in the workplace and how this so, could, you know, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's talk about truth versus perception a little bit. Um, um, I think uh, if you'll recall way back in uh, chapter five, we talked about that's a fact, Jack, and how important it is, particularly in today's world where, um, there's all kinds of biases uh, in the print media, in the in television media, uh, even in um, films and in Hollywood. So, um, so this is a take that you know we talked about truth and the importance of it. This is another look at that through the lens of truth versus perception. So, if I tell you something, and I tell you that two plus two is not equal to four. And we've talked about that before. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to say, well, no, that's not true, mm -hmm. but that's because your perception is that I'm talking about the same units, two apples plus two apples equals four apples. apples. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas I might be talking about two apples plus three plus two bananas. And that doesn't equal four of either of those things. So the perception, um, particularly in, in organizations, people's perception of you matters. A lot, of, a lot of times people forget that. And so when you talk about your brand or your reputation or your integrity, all of that goes into building what people's perception of you uh, is. And that perception can be negative. And sometimes uh, what I've found, uh, at least in my uh, organization at the Fortune 500 company, sometimes people have really long elephant memories. And so something that occurred 10 years ago can follow you around. And people's perception is, well, yeah, Tony's a troublemaker because at that one meeting he stood up and, um, you know, took a really different position from what we were saying. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's, that's reality. Perception is in the short term or the long term, um, that can be altered by what, what your actions are. Um, and so you, you can strive to have better integrity. Uh, you can strive to, um, do your work in a manner that's super professional. All those things create a perception and then that becomes the truth. Now, if you're someone who works really, really hard, um, but people aren't noticing you, then their perception might be, well, yeah, Tony, he's not really much of a team player. I never see him around and, and et cetera. No, not when you. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're quite opposite. But go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, so, so when Tony, for instance, spends a lot of his time in the cubicle, but he's working really, really hard on the project that's just people's perception of him. Uh, is negative, and then sometimes that becomes the truth, no matter what mm -hmm. the reality is. So that's that's kind of what I talk about in the chapter around truth versus perception. 
And by the way, just a reminder, how do we uh, get the book? How do we reach out to you? Tell us your contact information, please. Sure. You can get the book at um, Barnes & Noble. You can get it on Amazon. Um, you can reach me at 816-694-4656 uh, directly. Uh, if you prefer email, you can send that to me at tony.marl at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, Lead Left, Grow Right, and you can leave uh, a message for me on a contact form, and it'll be sent to me, uh, and then I can address that as well. And I, I hope that people will reach out to me um, so that uh, you know, I'm always open for a discussion or uh, to provide advice. Um, and, and advice is just like anything else, right? You can take it and throw it in a yeah. trash can. Mm -hmm. Or you can you can take it on. You know, if the advice is free, who cares? So um, it's just another piece of information for you to add to your repertoire or to solve your problem. Absolutely. And you say uh, do process solving instead of problem solving. Yes. Process solving instead of problem solving. Got it. Yeah. So problem solving often means that uh, let's say you're your problem is that um, you can never get to work on time because your car is 15 years old and often it breaks down, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's solving a problem. But if you approach problems, and sometimes in today's culture, you know, people have tried to make it seem uh happy happy joy joy but calling it an opportunity um yeah you know, it, it's a problem no matter what we call it we can call it an opportunity we can uh call it a, a bar fuckle. uh we can call it a nip knop um it doesn't really matter it's still a problem so call it a problem that's the first thing but then approach it from a process standpoint and looking at issues through a process, first of all, if you have a process, as we talked about the law of systems, you have to look at people, process, politics, and the technology. You have to look at all of that. So for instance, in this car problem, um, you know, obviously, holistically, you have to say, okay, well, my problem is I just can't get to work on time. Uh, but that's a, that's a point issue. So if you look at it from a process standpoint, you would then say, okay, well, the problem is not only that I get to work late, but then it affects how I work with the people on my team because now they have to wait for me for a meeting or I'm an expert on um, mining uranium. And if I'm not there, uh, and they can't reach me, then they lose the, my expertise. So your problem affects more than just you. And that's typically what happens with a problem. It affects people beyond yourself. So you have to look at it as a whole process. So, you know, if I were doing that, you would map kind of the process out. Okay, I get up at 5 a.m., um, you know, I brush my teeth, uh, I get dressed, I have breakfast, et cetera. So if you look at all those different elements, <clears throat> you might conclude and say, okay, well, the reason I don't, that I get to work late is not because of that, because I'm getting up two hours before I have to be there. Uh, it's not because my energy is low because I have a healthy breakfast. So then you go to the car and you say, okay, so now a car is a system in itself what are the kinds of things that are causing it to break down? Uh, what's the one or two things that are most impactful and it caused me to break down and go to work? And you may find, okay, well, it's an, it's an electrical issue. A lot of times my car will just die. So then you have to take it into a shop and get it diagnosed. And then they say, yeah, um, what's happening is your engine is not firing on all cylinders. So sometimes that's why it quits and they put something in to allow the electrical distribution to be correct. And then you don't break down as much as you did before. And then you would go to the next 
most important issue, et cetera. So that's a, a brief example of a problem and looking at all of the different process elements uh, in work, it's the same thing, right? It could be how, okay, here's how I prepare for um, my interviews with people and you list out all the steps and you say, okay, uh, let, let's include the technology. And you look at that whole thing and you say, okay, well, this is what I think I can improve, or this is where I'm really good at, so let's take a look at this part. And you look at it from a holistic process solving instead of problem solving. Problem solving tends to be a point issue or a single issue, whereas process solving is taking a look at the whole thing. And quite often, people don't take a look at the whole thing, and they need to. That's always the case, right? <laughs> yeah, yep. We need to open our eyes. I know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, and just a little bit about your background for new listeners out there today. My goodness, to have all the success uh, as an author and as a coach and what you're doing, just could you just give us a little bit of your background again? Sure. Um, when I'm in the Navy, or when, when I'm in the Navy, I'm not in right now. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> while I was in the Navy, um, so I had... Uh, training obviously uh, in college because I went to a place that's an uncollege called the Naval Academy and so that's a very different experience than most college students have but it completely helps form you into a leader um, and leadership is just it just is all over the campus and everything you do it's about leaders so that's my first formation then I was in the Navy for nine years and I was on three different ships so I got to see a lot of different configurations, a lot of different problems, a lot of different missions that yep. we had to do. Um, I taught at the Naval Academy to young students for two years, uh, which was fantastic. Um, so there I got to have an impact on the people that were eventually going to be leading the Navy. And then when I went to Hallmark Cards, uh, I started up in distribution, but I did um, almost every job uh, in the supply chain from the upfront taking the orders that part of it and working with the technology there to um, procurement and buying software uh, and hardware i, I kind of did a, a lot of jobs in the supply chain um, okay. so i've all of those help form my leadership and thoughts and where i landed on for this book And now that you, as an author, that you're teaching so many people, you're working with like big corporations and also individuals, right? Anyone right. that's willing to advance and wants to advance. Right, exactly. So trying to take that knowledge. And I think the, the big difference with my book, uh, I believe, is that it's very practical. You know, the, this advanced leadership, um, that's probably a, a more difficult chapter only in that the topics are a little harder to understand but my whole reason for doing that was to um, take the practical things that I learned and bring them out so that Back people to. can l learn that hmm. and we still have uh, five minutes left um, okay. what else in particular did you want to share well I thought um, next time I think we're going to talk about a topic that I, I would say virtually nobody has heard of the cost of poor leadership. Um, and uh, we'll talk about several different things uh, and the impact that having a bad leader, um, you know, the, if, if you have a chain and the, and the people in it represent the corporation in different levels, they always say that the weakest link in the chain so it could be one manager who's poisoning a group, et cetera. But we'll talk about the different problems that can arise from poor leadership that people may not think of. So um, we will talk about that next time and uh, get into uh, – there, there, I actually have a table of uh, about 10 or 12 things that really – cost companies when they have poor leadership so mm. make, make, making give us a the bad, teaser it's a teaser yes i yeah. like this M making a uh, 
making a, a bad decision, that's a leadership issue. That means the leaders either didn't look at things, for instance, from a system standpoint, or they didn't listen to advice that the experts gave them before making that decision because they already had an agenda ahead of time and the project fails and that's, that's, the, that's one cost of poor leadership. Uh, another, another cost, for instance, is if you have a bad leader who doesn't think about the people component uh, and all they're focused on is getting stuff done, a lot of times they leave carnage in their wake because people will be put off. Uh, people will feel like they're not being listened to uh, and they will stop producing good ideas. So that's a real harm in corporations that people don't uh, take into account. Or if yeah. they do, they wait for a long time. You know, let's say there's a, a bad leader out there or even a bad apple on a team. Mm -hmm. uh, they wait too long to, because we always, you know, we want to be nice to people and give them a chance. But oftentimes people wait way too long. And so that individual then poisons the well uh, and it makes it so you can't drink the water and you can't, the team just won't function very well. So those are a couple of the several topics we can talk about next time for the cost of poor leadership. Sounds good. And in the meantime, if we want to reach out, how do we do that? Uh, again, tony.marlt at gmail.com for email or my contact form is available on my website, lead left, grow right, or call me directly at 816-694-4656. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here, for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Is it the same time, same place? Wait, yeah. Gosh, next week, <gasps> Labor Day weekend and summer's coming to a close. Whoa, it's got to be a special edition, right? Definitely That's a right, special Jill. edition. You have a great day, Tony. Thank you so All much. All right, thanks. Take Appreciate care. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.